and you see the guy with the Kalashnikov turns the other way and behind him there's a lot of people and you just see how they're running and throwing themselves away because they were afraid or they were in the shooting line. We're about to meet with Chang Frick, who some people say is controversial. They say that he's aligned with the right-wing party here. Others say he's a good journalist. I guess we'll find out. How's it going, man? Hello. Uh, hello. Good to meet yeah. you. Yeah, that's Hi. also a journalist. Hi. Hello. Hey, Tim, nice to meet you. is a lot worse than anywhere we saw in Malmö. It's pretty interesting that Malmö got all this reputation. Probably it's because there have been a lot of shootings, but those yeah. shootings is, I would say, 99% criminal related. These problems that you see, this is um, problems that have been growing in Sweden the latest, I don't know, 15, maybe 20 years. Yeah. And if it continue in the same way, we have a new migration wave, so we will see the effects of that in the next 10 years, 15 years. So, I mean, if you're a bit pessimistic, which I understand a lot of people are, they, they of course, they are expecting that this will just become worse and worse. And I, I would say, if you, you know, look at statistics of different things, you know, number of cars being burned, number of riots, number of this and that, and you, and you look on it over a little bit longer period, you will see it, the trend is growing. The Swedes, if I use that word, or, or immigrants who have been living here uh, yeah. for enough time, the criminality amongst these people have been really decreasing. So if we didn't have this big immigration, yeah, it would. the numbers would be really low. You get it? Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, so uh, if you, if you, uh, so if you split it up, these numbers, not just take an average of all Sweden, you split it up to different groups, you will see it's a huge difference between. So the reason it haven't been been decreasing, it should decrease way much more. Yeah. But the migrants are. Yeah, keeping the numbers still on the level, even so making it maybe maybe a, 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 a bit uh, growing again. So, so the migrants are committing more crime. Way more. And this is numbers. This is this is facts. This is not you know. But the Swedish government won't put out a study showing the national origin of, of, of criminals. Exactly, exactly. So they refer to the old one and they say we have no reason to believe this has changed. So why do a new study? So what they're saying, okay, with that they are admitting, yeah, we, and they are. Yeah. They are saying we know that the immig immigrants, you know, people from with other origin foreign from other countries, yeah, that, that they are overrepresented. Just near Chang's house, we're gonna go get some semla because today is a holiday, right? Today's holiday. Yeah, apparently. Yeah, but I don't yeah. like semlas. I'm, I, I'm totally reject the idea of eating semlas, just for um, on the record. I'm dragging here. Uh, I'm dragging him here against his will, so he can enjoy the Swedish pastry holiday. But then he's gonna tell us a lot about what's actually going on here. Yeah. Whew. With the semlas. This, this area that we're in is a primarily migrant area. Yeah. And is this one of the problem areas the police have classified? Uh, yeah. Is, there, is that because it's a migrant? Like, why is that? It's, you can both claim it's immigrant, you can both claim it's social economic effects. You're watching the same coin just from different sides. It's the same thing you're actually talking about. Because it's pretty easy, you know, if, if it comes a lot of people from Sweden, let's say from the Middle East, they, you don't know the language, you don't know the culture, and Swedes are very cold people. It's very hard to network with Swedes. They, they, they are very um, reserved as people. It's hard to, to, to get into the Swedish society for a lot of people, even for me, and I'm born in Sweden. Sweden is a split society. There is a lot of shit going on, more than you believe. And the shit is affecting normal people. There is immigrants with a job, of course, and he's going to the job the next day. And when he's going to drive, his car is burned up. So he's the victim. So those who who is the victims of this happening is immigrants, you know, 
Uh, so if you ask them, go and ask people. You're in the area, go and ask them. You, you don't have to get it from me. How often do you see a car set on fire in Stockholm? They know that in if, if I just go night crawling, I would say almost every day. Almost every day? Yeah, if, if I say like this, okay, tonight I'm going to find a car fire. I most probably will, yes. Most probably. That, seem, that seems a bit extreme to an American. We don't, you know, sure, we have stuff like that sometimes, but a car set on fire every night yeah. in the city? That's, that's extreme. Uh, everything's relative. Yeah. I, I've get, got used to it. Do you see violent crime on the rise in Sweden? Yeah. And do you think this has anything to do with bringing in refugees over the past two years? No, not at all. Was Trump right when he said that Sweden's got problems from immigration? Uh, yeah, definitely, yeah. Is the media in Sweden covering it up? <laughs> no, it, it's a definition. What is cover up? What do you mean with cover up? I, in a one way, yes. In one way, no. It depends what you're are addressing. They, are they ignoring the problem and acting like it doesn't exist? Uh, not really, no. The media in Sweden, they recognize it's some problems, but they don't really want to highlight it too much because they are afraid that if we talk too much and let people know that there is problems in immigrant areas, people can turn racists. So we have a moral obligation not to make people racists. So we have to be very careful reporting about this. So they have these codes that uh, if it's a criminal and is arrested, there was 500 witnessing suing and five CCTVs and everything. Yeah, but he's not convicted yet, so we shouldn't publish his name or a photo of him, you know? Even though it's obvious it was him. You regularly go night crawling, right? Yeah, pretty regular, so yeah. For, for the people watching, night crawling, it's, you know, journalists will go out late at night, they'll follow tips and, and, and track down crime and things like that. Yeah, That's yeah, a fair yeah. assessment. And you see car fires all the time. Very, very often, yeah. You, you've got a ton of footage that you can show us? <laughs> yeah. And, and, and I'm, I'm go just going to show footage the latest weeks or months. The latest weeks and months. Let's go see. Yeah. There have been a lot of robberies here, really. I mean, so they drove a car in here, smashed the whole window, the whole wall, it went just in with the car. They ran in with Kalashnikovs. And they were outside watching, so no people went here. So, you know, they, they, there are some guards patrolling. They were just telling people, get off, get off, you know. Uh, and they were running, and they were just filled with gold and stuff, you know, from the jewelry. So, yeah. Wow. And they went to the backside, just where I live, you know. Yeah. Jumped in the car and drove away, uh, away on this small road. So when I got here, you know, there was this car standing here, lots of people, policemen, everything, you know, it was total chaos. And you see the guy with the Kalashnikov turns the other way, and behind him there's a lot of people, and you just see how they're running and throwing themselves away because they were afraid, or they were in the shooting yeah. line. And they actually shot some shots inside the store, if I don't remember it wrong. Yeah, so they were totally wild, you know, they're going to rob this place. Here I hear all the alarms from the fire trucks. This is an old from the 80s, but they're still using the system. The police used to have this before. Now they are in a more modern, encrypted, so I, I can't listen to the police. But this works perfect. I hear one. You know, they say what's going on, a car fire or whatever. Maybe someone is just stuck in the elevator. But I know what is it and the address. And I know it immediately, so I just grab my camera, run down to the car and go there as fast as I can. So I'll be very often I'm first on the spot. So uh, here, here, which is the latest folder? This is the latest folder. So and we go from the bottom up. So which is the latest car fire? Here you got a car fire. This was the shittiest, weakest excuse for a car fire. But you see, it's a fire. This was... 12th of February. That was just a couple weeks ago. Yeah, and this is just down a block from here. It's very close, yeah. But this is, this is just a shitty car. You see, they break, broke the window, they threw something in, it's burning in the car, but the car never really starts to burn. Mm -hmm. They wanted to quick the police. You can see they are, you know, there's the police. So, I mean, this is just a shitty car fire, shitty excuse for a car fire. So, and then I think I've been mostly taking photos of, you know, police cars and stuff, because I need su such photos what's, when... What's the, like, what's the most recent thing that, that's happened that you've, you've captured? Uh, let's see, something which is more fun. Uh, fun is the wrong word to use, maybe, but 
you know what I mean. What's this? Aha, this was a guy shot to death. When was this? Uh, this was not... Uh, this was... January. Uh, does it, I don't see... Yeah, 20th of January. Yeah, he was killed. Uh, so they uh, closed off the area with a lot of police cars. The car... Uh, when I went to the scene, there was a red car with the engine still going because they had just brought him out, took him to the ambulance and the handbrake was and the police don't touch the car because the tech technicians is going to investigate, you know, is there a trace for DNA or anything. So the keys were still in and the engine was still going, so it was standing there, going with the engine, you know, and you could see through the... I have a picture here somewhere. So you see on here they shot through the window. Oh, wow. Yeah, so I got it on pic picture, you know. Mm -hmm. And that guy died, this was behind a school. But in the evening, not during when there were students there. Uh, what else do we have? Here is another lousy excuse of a car fire. Uh, but still, it's a car fire. Here we've got... You know... Yeah, but, I mean, come on. It, it's like the... Lo, lo, that's teeny tiny. That's yeah. teeny. That's the teeniest little... I've got... I've got some cool... Uh, this was something else. What is this? This is when they put a house on fire. Isn't it? Yeah. Oh, wow. uh, but but th that was not related to, you know, criminal people. It was some other stuff. Oh. Uh, what do we have here? Yeah, uh, this is car fire. It's still burning, you know. But we can take it from when I went... Oh, this is, this is pretty tragic. Because at the scene... I spoke to this guy, uh -huh. and that's his car. Oh. And he needed his car the day after because he was going with his kids, you know, to kindergarten and then go to his job and everything, you know. And he's literally watching his car burning. Yeah. So this is my neighbor's reality. You see the house, you can see everything. This is the area, you know. I can show you the same. I, I, I can show you the same spot, you know. If people are treating him bad, putting his car on fire, maybe it's a good idea to, you know. Talk about this issue. All right, all right. So what's... We're going to go night crawling later. Yep. But until then, we are gonna, we have to edit this video and upload this video for tonight. So that people aren't going to... You know, the, the night crawling will be tomorrow. So I guess before we go night crawling, what's the last thing you want to say? I, I will say this. Some nights when you go night crawling, you won't find a fucking mm -hmm. damn shit. The next day you go... Hell is breaking loose, literally. You never know what... It's like fishing. Sometimes you go fishing, you won't get anything. And the next day, you're just three minutes and you get the biggest fucking ugliest fish you could ever dream of. You, you never know what's going to happen. And that's a thing... That's why I think it's pretty excitement to go night crawling, because you never know what to expect. And, and since it doesn't happen anything exactly every time, sometimes you, you go, you know, nothing happens. And next time something happens, it gets more exciting in a way, because you never know. So, I'm just telling you, uh, don't expect too much, but be prepared for anything. <laughs>